honor of it being springtime, today I'm making a uh, daisy light fixture, lamp light fixtures, probably more accurate. Um, and by springtime, what I really mean is it's that time of year where it's technically spring, but it's damp and wet and miserable. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm gonna make this today to like brighten things up. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I started by sketching my petal design out in Adobe Illustrator, and then once I was happy with it, I could go ahead and cut it out of my material. I went with mahogany because I had a bunch of it, and I also really love the color. To prep this for the laser, I'm sanding and getting masking material on. This is the first big project I'm doing on our new huge Thunder Laser. You can tell by the really clean honeycomb. So I'm especially excited to see how this laser cut goes and how it handles. It was very fast. And really, really clean cuts on these. All the petals just whoop slipped out just like that without any snagging. All right, we're gonna need to do the same process a bunch of times until we have enough petals to fill up the entire daisy. And I had a pretty good idea of what this is gonna look like on my computer screen, but it's not the same as seeing it in real life and in real size. This ended up being a larger scale than I was planning for, but I kind of like that about it. For now, I'm leaving that green tape on there because it's gonna help with this next step. I'm filling each petal with resin and the tape's gonna make a pocket for the resin to sit in as it cures. Hardened resin doesn't stick to the sticky side of painter's tape, so this is my favorite way to do a resin inlay with based, like the most minimal materials and tools needed. Next is a thin coat of clear resin on the edges. This is gonna finish sealing off the tape to make sure there's no leaks, but it's also gonna seal off the end grain on the wood so there's no bubbles in our bigger resin pour. It's kind of a tedious step to be honest, but it's well worth it in my opinion to get a sleeker end result. It also adds a lot of time because I need to let this set for at least 24 hours or so before the next part. This is Alumilite clear cast epoxy that I'm coloring with a little bit of this pigment powder from Starbond. It's a pearlescent white to make it look like a daisy, but I also think having just that little bit of pigment in the epoxy is going to go a long way to diffusing the light nicely since this is going to be a light fixture. A flame over the top of each petal pops all the bubbles for a really clear looking end result. And then I let this sit for about 48 hours until the epoxy was completely hardened. And then I could peel off my tape. <laughs> the tape was all sticking to each other, which was interesting. <laughs> I'm peeling all this off as best as I can. It's gonna end up looking a little crazy still, but it's not gonna matter because they're getting sanded soon. But for now, I'm gonna just lay them out again which is fun because it's really starting to look like a daisy. But I'm also doing this to give myself an idea of how I want to 3D print the center bracket. It's going to look like the center of the daisy, but it's also going to hold the light element and hold my petals how I want them. Um, I want the center row of petals to be angled upwards a little bit and the back row flat. And here's the 3D model that I came up with. Um, I'm going to let that 3D print. It's a 23 hour <laughs> 3D print. So while that's going, I'm gonna pop back over to these petals. The sanding process took a really long time, so we're gonna breeze through that, but a key step in getting a nice finish is that after I sanded them, I wiped them down really, really well with water. This is gonna get any resin dust and sawdust off of there before a finish goes on. It also gives a sneak peek of the mahogany and resin combo.
I'm going with the hard wax oil finish for this because it's gonna look really luminous and velvety but still be matte, which is really important to me because it's a light fixture. Anything even a little bit glossy is gonna make a glare possibly and kind of interfere with the finished look. And then the 3D print was done. Getting the supports out of this ended up being more difficult than expected, in particular the row of diagonal slots. Those ended up a bit messier than I would have liked, but it was pretty good. So I went ahead and put a filler primer on this to lay a base for the final paint job. We're going chrome on this and I'm using lots and lots of very thin coats. This is gonna make it dry better, but I can also stop once I'm happy with the look. So this was designed so the LEDs would weave like weave right into this so from here this whole thing really should snap together um, and I am adding a little bit of hot glue to the base of the LED lights just to keep them extra secure they shouldn't need it necessarily since they're self-adhesive but I figured oh, why not and now we can plug it in and then all the bulky wires should be able to be shoved into the back of this and hidden completely this particular set can be turned on and off with the clicker that's attached to it, or it also works on a remote. Um, I'm gonna eventually set it up to work on a remote, but here is the finished effect. I think it looks great. So excited with how this came out. I love the way the two different rows of LEDs and the two different rows of petals play with the color of the mahogany and it has such a different look in the daylight that I also really love. I think my favorite though is this slow dimmer setting where it goes up and down and up and down on the petals. I love it so much.